Good day, Grade 5 students, and welcome to Science 5 with me, Miss Lila. Today, we will discover how rocks turn into soil. But before we proceed to that, let us play a game called Jumble Words and scramble the letters to discover the answer. Are you ready? Okay, let's proceed. Number one. It is formed when molten matter inside the earth, cold magma, comes out of a volcano and later cools down and solidifies. Here's your clue. So what is the answer? The answer is igneous rock. The second one is this rock can be generally found on ocean and lake beds and on rocky surfaces of earth's crust. Here's your clue. So what is the answer? The answer is sedimentary rocks. And for the third one, this rock is produced when igneous and sedimentary are exposed to high temperatures and pressure. Here's your clue. So what is the answer? The answer is metamorphic rock. Good job! You got all the answers correct. Good job! How do you think the earth used to be compared today? Do you think it is the same the way it was before? Earth is mainly composed of rocks that differ in sizes, shapes, and color. As you know, in transit of time, many changes occur on earth. Though rock seems to be very hard, dense, and indestructible, they still break. Yes, you heard it right. Rock still breaks. I'll show you a news from New Hampshire, USA, and it involves a story about rocks or an earth platform that they treasure the most in that area. Watch carefully and listen carefully. It now appears New Hampshire's old man of the mountain tumbled from his perch Friday night. That's when two campers are saying they heard a loud rock slide. It might well have been the demise of the old man. Crowds flocked to the park to stare at the spot where the historic granite profile once watched over New Hampshire. Experts believe it fell victim to erosion. The old man on the mountain, gone. You can see how it looked before and after the landmark face crumbled Friday night. Can it and... From the photos shown in the news, let's find the difference of the before and after appearance of the mountain. The picture on the left was taken a day after the residents heard a loud noise coming from the mountain. On May 3, 2003, iconic landmark fell to the ground. Can you see the difference between the two pictures? There are some parts of the rock or the old man's face that are gone. The nose is already gone. After some time, many factors can cause rocks to deteriorate and to collapse eventually. Let's perform an experiment by observing, comparing, inferring, and communicating. And through this experiment, let's discover how rocks can turn into pieces. Let's call this Oops, experiment. The tax, oops, oops, the tax. Bring it down, yo. Bring it down, yo. Experiment number one. These are the things that you need. You need two pieces of chalk, a bowl or canister, a tablespoon, a vinegar. Get a piece of chalk and pour the vinegar on it. Observe what will happen to the chalk. Describe the kind of change or transformation happened to the piece of chalk. And experiment number two, these are the things that you need. You need two pieces of chalk, a hammer, a piece of cloth. Get a piece of chalk and wrap it in a piece of cloth. Pound it using the hammer, but please be extra careful in using the hammer. Use it only on the chalk, okay? And after that, describe the kind of change or transformation that happened to the piece of chalk. In the experiment that we performed, chalk represents rocks. You've seen two different ways 
of how can rock turn into pieces. With experiment 1, the chalk was destroyed through acid, which is vinegar. On the other hand, the chalk on experiment number 2 turned into pieces by pounding of the hammer onto the chalk. And this process of breaking down of rocks into pieces is called weathering. Weathering is the process of decomposing, breaking of rocks into fragments, and or changing the color of the rocks. Weathering is an important process that helps shape the earth's surface. The breaking of rocks result in the formation of soil and different land forms. And this is also the reason why we have amazing rock formation around the world, especially in the Philippines. I've seen some of the beautiful rock formation in the Philippines, and it is truly amazing to imagine how they turned into majestic scenery. So now moving on, let's discuss the two types of weathering. After defining the types of weathering, I want you to identify the two experiments that we did. Which one is mechanical and which one is the chemical. Moving on, mechanical weathering is caused by breaking down of rocks into smaller pieces by physical force without any changing the chemical nature of the rock. It is also called physical weathering because only the physical component of the rock changes but not the chemical component. There are types of mechanical weathering like frost wedging, abrasion, and biological weathering. Sample of mechanical weathering is frost wedging. This is not really common in the Philippines because we are a tropical country and we do not have winter. The water has the ability to expand up to 9% of its original volume when it freezes. So imagine from 100%, it becomes 109%. So it exceeds its original volume. And so the water that gets into the little cracks of the rock during the rain will eventually freeze and will expand shaping into a wedge. This is the shape of a wedge. Yes, that one. As it repeats over time, the rocks will eventually break, turning it into a soil as it falls down the ground. Next one is abrasion. Moving water causes abrasion. The wind also causes the abrasion. In moving water, it moves rocks so they bump against each other. Water flowing through river or beach causes them to hit each other. This contact causes abrasion which makes the rocks round. And in wind abrasion, as the small particle of dust or soil touches the surface of bigger rocks, it leads damage to the rocks. Another mechanical weathering is biological weathering. Biological, from the Latin word bios, means life. So this weathering is caused by living things. Every plant and trees are constantly finding nutrients on the ground. So as they crawl on the ground, as they find nutrients on the ground, their roots grow and expand, causing the rocks and soil to break. This is considered biological weathering because a living thing is involved in weathering. Now, the other types of weathering is chemical weathering. Chemical weathering causes change to the minerals inside or on the surface of the rocks. This happens through chemical reaction. And when there is chemical reaction, and when there is change on the shape or color of the rock, chemical weathering is involved. Sample of chemical weathering are hydrolysis or weathering by water, oxidation or weathering by oxygen, and carbonation or weathering by carbon. Focusing on oxidation, there are some minerals in rocks that when exposed to oxygen, changes its color and composition. Most of the time, the minerals decompose and become rust, which makes the rocks turn into brownish or earthy color. Just like the video here, 
This is a chemical weathering of hematite by oxidation. And another chemical weathering that produces majestic result is carbonation. Do you know that stalactites and stalagmites are results of carbonation or the chemical weathering? Steps to form stalactites and stalagmites are follow these. Rainwater dissolves carbon dioxide in the air, resulting in a carbonic acid solution. Carbonic acid solution penetrates into the ground and reacts with calcite. The main mineral for limestone in caves, forming a calcium bicarbonate solution. Calcium bicarbonate solution drops into the ceiling of the cave and the floor. Over time, the water in the solution evaporates, leave only calcite. Calcite mineral deposits accumulate slowly, or approximately 0.13 mm per year. Over millions of years, it will form stalactites and stalagmites. So as the rain and carbon dioxide combines, it produces acid. And when that acid gets into the soil, eventually, through years, millions of years, it will produce stalactites and stalagmites. And you don't have to go to the other country to witness this wonderful creation. You can go to Palawan or in Sagada to witness this majestic scenery inside the caves. Yes, we have wonderful sceneries in the Philippines. So now let's see if you really understood our lesson. Which of the two experiments is mechanical weathering? Okay, the mechanical weathering Experiment number two, wherein we use hammer to pound the chalk. And the chemical weathering is experiment number one, wherein we use acid or vinegar to break down the chalk. Good job! I hope you understand our lesson today. Now that you know the two types of weathering, let us proceed to the agents of weathering. Let us further discuss the agents that helps weathering to occur. First one is water. Strong pressure or strong waves of water can damage rocks, resulting to gradual breaking of the rock. Moreover, when they seep into cracks of the rocks and freeze, it will expand, causing the rocks to break apart. The second one is wind. Strong wind causes abrasion by blasting sand against rock surfaces. Wind, dirt, or small particles of sand are blown away and hit the surface of rocks. It leaves some damage to the surface of rocks. And when the wind is so strong during typhoon, they can break rocks too. So you should be careful. Next is temperature. When the rocks are exposed to varying temperature, it expands. And when exposed to low temperature, it contracts. And the repeated expansion and contraction of rocks due to changes in temperature contributes to the weathering. Next is plants. When plants or trees grow on rocks, the expansion of roots causes the gradual breaking of rocks, especially the trees which has bigger roots. They can break the cemented ground in search of nutrients in the soil. And another is animal. Animals that burrow the ground dig deeper. They cause rocks to break into pieces too. Just like this animal called mole, as it digs deeper into the soil, it slowly breaks the soil and the rocks into pieces. And another one is us, humans. Human uses heavy-duty machines to flatten mountains or hills to develop houses and building. So landform consisting rocks are broken down to pieces and construction workers using jackhammers to break the boulders. Mining companies that extract stones from quarry or an open pit mine uses dynamite and other explosives. Yes indeed, we are also a great factor in the occurrence of weathering. Now that you know the types of weathering and the agents that help in occurrence of weathering, I hope that you'd be responsible for every action you make to our environment because you are an agent.
understand our lesson through a modified true or false. Write true if the statement is true and if it is false, change the underlined word or words to make the statement correct. First one, weathering is the process of decomposing, breaking of paper into pieces, and or changing its color. Is it true or false? The answer is false. So the underlying word should be replaced by the word rocks. Very good. Number two, mechanical weathering is caused by breaking down of rocks into smaller pieces by physical force without any change in the chemical nature of the rock. Is it true or false? The answer is true. The third one, oxidation is considered physical weathering. The answer is false. The underlined word should be replaced by chemical. And the fourth one, when wind freezes, it expands, causing the rock to break. Is it true or false? The answer is false. The underlined word should be replaced by the word water. Very good. And for the last one, Stalactites and stalagmites are results of chemical weathering. Is this true or false? The answer is true. Good job! You did a great job today! I hope you enjoy learning science and see you again soon!